to the Advancing Church. You're about to hear a word straight from God. I'm talking about mind-changing, heart-transforming word. So grab your coffee, grab your Bibles, and ready your mind for a move of God. Because God is going to do some things in your life that cannot be calculated. And I'm grateful for that. That God will do things in our lives that can not be calculated. Now, I'm on a specific assignment uh, this morning. I know what God has told me to declare specifically. Yeah, yeah. And and I said, God, what 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 is this about? He said, I need you to say this because uh, someone is on the verge. But I want you to declare something to them that's going to shift their lives permanently. And so the Lord, as we've been in the book of Acts, has been speaking to each and every one of us and giving us direction. And God showed me how intentional he is about his people. He said, I'm just that intentional that I will set up circumstances for them to experience new levels of my love oh yes he said I'm setting them up even now and, and so I, I want to go to the scripture let's go to Acts chapter 16 and, and I don't even think this is going to be long because it you know when you get a word that's so precise you don't need a whole lot of words it is just clear what God is saying and so I want you to go with me to Acts chapter 16, uh, verses 25 through 34. I'm not going to read all of these verses because I know how tired y'all are. And, you know, y'all are tired and hot, so. <laughs> Jesus. Glory be to God. Acts 16, starting with verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, and suddenly, somebody shout suddenly. And, and suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened. Somebody shout, all the doors were opened. And everyone's bonds were unfastened. It sounds like the prison could not handle the praise. It, it sounds like the prison that they were in could not handle the praise. Now, this is a word to each and every one of you this morning. No matter what prison you're in, God told me to declare prophetically that it cannot handle your praise. There is a praise that is so powerful that chains can't withstand it. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ought to praise God right now. Right now. Right now. Whatever you're in right now, I declare that chains are being broken right now as you praise God. Prison doors will open. 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 Get up. Hallelujah. 
Jesus. Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I thank you right now for your word. You've given me a specific word for your people. I thank you, O oh Lord, that breakthrough is happening right now. That as their hearts praise you, their hearts are free. Their body is free. Their mind is free. They're coming out of every place that the enemy has put them in. Oh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. I give you all the glory. Yeah, hey, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, before you take your seat, I want you to touch somebody standing next to you and tell them, don't kill yourself on an assumption. Don't kill yourself on on an assumption. Yeah. Our assumptions can get us in trouble just assuming certain things can get us in trouble you know this particular text really I mean it grabbed me and, and the reason why it grabbed me was because uh, God had blocked Paul and Silas from going to some other places that they really wanted to go. The Holy Spirit uh, stopped them from going to Bithynia. Uh, the Holy Spirit stopped them from going to Asia. Uh, the Holy Spirit was blocking them and forbidding them so they could not go to the places that they thought they should go. And we don't talk enough about the blessing of being blocked. We, we, we talk so much about open doors and how God is going to open these doors for you. But there is a major uh, blessing uh, when God blocks you. Uh, because what it really speaks to is God ordering your steps. Uh, it means that you are not your own. You've been bought with a price. And because you have been bought, you're not in control of where you go. I'm so grateful that God's word will be a lamp unto my feet and he will guide me. Because there are times when we just don't know no better. But in our particular text... Uh, on this morning, there is uh, someone that God has in mind. And God has set the apostles on a course that is going to collide with a jailer. And that jailer is someone that God has anointed for purpose. It is clear that God has something great in store for this man, but this man doesn't even know it yet. What I find very uh, intriguing about the scripture passage uh, that God has brought us to on this morning is that they turn a prison into a sanctuary. I find it amazing that they can literally shift the atmosphere of a prison. And the reason why I find this so compelling uh, is because when you think about prisons, uh, most people think that uh, those that are there are society's worst. Uh, so they're not used to praising and worshiping God. Uh, but there is such a power 
power that is in the prison that the prisoners can't stop what God is doing. Isn't it amazing that even if you don't participate, God can still move in a powerful way? It, isn't it amazing that God has sent these men of God into a prison? And sometimes we start to look at our situations and we say, God, well, if I was doing what you called me to do, how could I end up here? And, and we start questioning God because of the place that we're in but I want you to know that even when you're in an uncomfortable place God's hand is still all over you I, I want you to know that it can get ugly sometimes uh, but God is even in the ugly God is in the uncomfortable God is in the prison God is in the conflict God is in the trouble as a matter of fact the scripture says that he's a present help uh, in the time of trouble trouble tells me something about my relationship with God God says you can you can handle this trouble as a matter of fact there is treasure in trouble there's revelation in trouble God said I need some people that can handle some trouble uh, that know how to work with trouble uh, and wait in trouble uh, and pray in trouble uh, and sing in suffering uh, I need some people uh, that can and turn the temperature up. Hallelujah. Turn it up in the prison. Shake the prison. Shake the prison. He said, I need some people that can that can handle difficult circumstances. How did they get here in prison? They got here because of the good they did. They, they got here because there was a slave girl that was being pimped out. And they said, you know what? We're not going to allow this to happen. Uh, she followed them for some days. Uh, and, and the spirit within her started to vex the man of God. And the man of God said, enough is enough. I, I'm tired of you being used by them. Uh, this spirit that's in you is going to have to let you go. So he cast it the spirit out. And people got upset. They got mad because they said, My money making, my money making, my money making scheme, my, my, my girl, she got delivered. Oh my God. Yeah, God will see this is how God be moving. He, he'll deliver somebody that you were depending on to see if you would turn to him once he stopped the flow. Now, they didn't have to let her go. They didn't have to say, you know what? We've used you up enough. Uh, you know, we're done with you. They didn't have to give her permission to leave. All God had to do was deliver her. God delivers her and people get upset. They said these men done come down here and they changing customs and they, they causing trouble. It's all about their money though. They said they causing causing trouble here and, 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 and we got to do something about them because they done messed up my money. The thing about this passage is they were supposed to get in trouble. They were supposed to get in trouble so that God could usher them into their necks. See, see, listen, there are places that God want us to go that people of God can't take us. I want to say that again. There are places that we're supposed to go 
that the people of God can't even take us. There are places you are supposed to go that only your enemy can take you there. I want you to hear me. There are places that that the saints cannot take you. There are places that only the enemy can take you to. Oh my Lord. Y'all don't believe it. Y'all don't believe it. But the only way that they're going to get to prison is the enemy got to take them there. The enemy has to take them to their next assignment. Do not get upset when your enemy starts pushing you. Okay, that's not shout worthy. Do not get upset when God start using people that mean you no good. Because they will carry you into the next assignment that God has ordained for your life. They are supposed to go to prison. They go to prison and they said, you know what? We ain't going to leave this atmosphere like this. Somebody get a song in your mouth. Somebody, because this thing is about to change and we're about to shake this whole thing up. If I'm here, I gotta be here on purpose. How do I know that? Well, he didn't let me go to Bithynia and he didn't let me go to Asia, but I'm finding myself in prison right now. The Holy Spirit was all in this thing. I love it how God can even use our enemies. I, I love it how God can work all things together for our good. Everything that's happening in your life. God said, let me mix that up. You want to take them to prison? Well, we're going to turn the prison upside down. Stop talking about people who are locked up. Oh, yeah, stop talking about people who are locked up. That's where the next great revival is coming from. It's coming from the prison. They're in prison. They start singing. Oh, God. They start praising God. They could be in prison complaining, talking about why are we here. We do we doing the work of God. God, God done called us. Why are we in prison? We don't belong in prison with these people. We're not like these people. And God got a whole plan for them. Wrong attitude. You better get a song. You better get a song. You better start praising God. Stop asking why you're there. And do what believers do in uncomfortable situations. Quit asking God, why am I here? I, I, don't, I just don't get it. I don't, I, I don't know, God. I, I, I thought I'd be further along by now. And God is saying, you're missing your moment. I got you here for a reason. Now sing. Touch your neighbor and tell them, now sing, sing, sing. Now praise, now sing, now praise, now sing, now praise, now sing. Sing about the goodness of the Lord. Say, God, I thank you that I'm blessed in the city, that I'm blessed in the field, that I'm blessed coming and I'm blessed going. I thank you that you are my shepherd. Sing, praise, sing, praise, 
Deus e ara só they're singing they're praising and something strange happens wait a minute praying and singing hymns in prison and I said God I wish I knew the hymn <laughs> what hymn was that And he said, don't worry about the hymn. Worry about the heart. Yeah, they, they had a heart to worship God. And the prisoners started listening. It didn't say that the prisoners joined in. It didn't say that. It said the only thing that the prisoners were doing was listening. Why am I making that point? I'm making that point because the ones who are praising and singing are about to change it even for the listeners. The listeners are about to get what the praisers okay okay come on come on come on come on come on they're about to get what the praisers and the prayers are about to get oh everybody about to get blessed in this season as long as you're willing to listen you ain't got to do it too but respect it enough to not interrupt it. Oh my God. Uh, don't, don't interrupt it. Uh, just listen because if you let them go, if you let the praisers and the prayers go, it's going to touch this whole prison. This prison is about to experience a suddenly. Touch somebody and tell them suddenly it's going to happen. I, I can't interrupt what God is doing right now because I see a suddenly that is coming to my life. Now this messed me up because uh, as they are singing uh, the the bonds come loose and the prison doors open. The prison doors open. Somebody shout, the doors are open. The prison doors open, but nobody leaves. Nobody leaves the prison. They stay in their cell. There is a blessing in not moving before your time. If you learn how to rest under authority, God said, I'll do something great in your life. Not only will you come out, but I'll clean you up. So, so they see the prison doors fly open and nobody leaves guess what the jailer is doing he's sleeping the jailer is asleep and the prison doors are open that ain't it it was an earthquake he's still asleep there was a shaking in the whole prison and God told me, he said, the jailer was exhausted. Yeah. Are we going somewhere? The jailer was exhausted. 
And when he woke up and saw that the prison doors were open, he was getting ready to kill himself. And guess what? Out of the prison, Paul says, don't harm yourself. We still here. He would have killed himself if they would have left. The reason why he's alive is because they understand authority and they said we're not leaving this place until we get permission to go. Now the average Christian would have said this is God, it's time for me to leave. This is God. God done made a way for us to escape the prison uh, and everybody let's go. You know that would have been you. Oh my God, look at God. We gone. But they don't understand that there's a man that God has selected. And the reason why they are there is for the jailer. The jailer has a special assignment on his life. Can we look deeper, right? There are things that you're in for somebody else. Oh, God. There are things, I'm telling you right now, there are things that you are in for someone else. You just need to find who are you. Who are you? Who am I here for? Who am I here for? Because as soon as you identify who you're there for, you're coming out. Touch somebody and tell them you're on your way out of this. You're on, you, you on your way out of this. You are on your way out. Now, this is what messes me up about the jailer. The jailer wakes up. Be careful what judgments you make out of sleep. Be careful what judgments you make when you're tired. Be careful what judgments you make while you're frustrated. He wakes up out of his sleep and he sees the prison doors open. I said, now, he's getting ready to kill himself because of what he's looking at from the outside. He has not even went into the prison to see if they're gone. The only thing he saw was the doors open and he assumed they were gone. And the Lord told me to tell you, don't kill yourself based on an assumption. You keep looking at stuff with your natural eyes and you going to kill yourself over something that's not even fact. They're still there. They ain't left nowhere because these are my men and I called them and I anointed them. Please don't kill yourself thinking that they're gone. They are not gone. Who would have thought that the voice of a prisoner would save a life? Stop judging people who are in. Because some of the people who are in are more anointed than the people who are out. What am I talking about? You might be in debt right now. Mm. But I want you to know that even in debt you anointed. Yeah. You might be struggling in your marriage right now, but even in your struggle you anointed. 
You better shout outside and get a message to someone who get ready to take themselves out. The prisoner, the jailer, this is a date ordained by God that the jailer would get completely set free. Not just the jailer, but the jailer's family. Everybody is about to be touched by what happens in the jailer's life. What is an assumption? An assumption is a conclusion that we come to without the facts. We just assume certain things. And because the jailer woke up out of a sleep, a deep sleep, if an earthquake can happen and you still sleep, they just let them sleep. They didn't even try to wake them up. The prisoners let him sleep. The scripture doesn't even tell us how long he slept. All we know is that he slept and they didn't move. My God, when we learn how to stay still in the midst of a situation that is just uncomfortable. Most times we run from situations that are uncomfortable. Touch the person next to you. Tell them don't run yet. Because God is not done. Don't, don't, don't run yet. Just stay right there in the prison. Don't, don't go nowhere. Just stay right there. Because I'm about to do something with the man that locked you up. This is where we get to see how broad God is and how fast God is. That he has a plan for the prisoners and the jailer. Isn't that amazing that even the people who turn the key to lock you in, that God has something that he's ordained for them to get? And they going to get it because you didn't shut your mouth. You sang and you praised and it was for the one who locked you up. Y'all don't want to praise God for that one, huh? You're actually, you're actually being used by God to bless your enemy. Oh, yeah, you are. See, we don't like that. We, 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 you could tell when people carnal. That's too far. I was, I was following it as long as I was getting out. <laughs> but the reality is that there are people who are in close proximity who don't like you that God want to bless. Oh, my God. Can you imagine that God want to bless some people that don't like you? Touch the person next to you and tell them, God, I want to bless some people I don't even like. <laughs> God want to bless some people that you don't even like. And that's good news because there's some people that don't like you. let an assumption kill you it'd be better for the jailer to get his butt out of the seat and just walk into the prison you get ready to make a decision that's life ending and you didn't even get up to go in now I gotta say this this jailer lazy you are very lazy for you to just sit in a chair and look at the doors and say, the prisoner's gone. I'm drawing the sword. I'm about to die. Get up and go in and look before you kill yourself over something that didn't even happen. 
there are people right now that's getting ready to make a decision about their lives because they made an assumption. And what you believe ain't even true. Look at the person next to you and tell them, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, 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 don't make a mess. Don't draw the sword and kill yourself. Don't, don't do that. You, you being lazy now. Laziness will kill you. It'll kill your future. It'll kill your destiny. It'll derail you. You got to be willing to get up and go in. It's your job. You're a jailer. <laughs> See, this is, what, this is how I talk to myself when I'm at home reading it. What are you doing? Just go into the prison and look. Why they got to tell you we still here? God has a plan for a man that's sleeping on his job. And he lazy. But God got to work for a lazy, irresponsible man. And he said, I'm about to touch your whole house. And I'm going to transform your life. There's some people here right now. You've been sleeping on a job. You've been sleeping on the assignment that God gave you. You've been sleeping and God been shaking stuff and you still sleep. The prison doors done flew open, you still sleep. Shake the person next to you, tell them, wake up! The doors are open. Wake up! The doors are open. Wake up! There's a move of God that just occurred in this place. Can you imagine that somebody can sleep and a great move of God done happen? The foundation shook and somebody slept through the whole thing. These are the people that will wake up and say, ain't no move of God happen. You were asleep. You didn't wake up. No, it's a move that done happen. And how do we know? How do we know? The doors are open. Chains are off. We know that there is a move that happened because people are loose. They're not out, but they're loose. It is possible to be in and loose. God. It is possible that you could be loose and still in. It is possible that the door could be open and you still in it. God is about to bring some people out on this morning. I dare you to give God 30 seconds of praise because I know it's going to happen. You are coming out of whatever it is. Come on, praise him right here, right here, right here, right here. Shake this place. Come on, shake it. Shake the place. Shake the place. In Abacosi. Shake the place. Come on, you're not done yet. Shake it. Shake it. Shake the house. Shake the house. Yes. Yes. Oh. Right there, right there. Come on. There's a shaking that's happening in this place. There's a shaking that's happening in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul cried out. I'm closing. Paul cried out with a loud voice. He said, do not hurt yourself for we are all here and the jailer called for the lights oh my god and then the jailer rushed in he rushed in after word got out after the lights got turned on i'm telling you right now you're about to get 
get shaken to the point that you will never be lazy again. You're about to hear an apostolic sound. Don't harm yourself. Don't harm yourself. Tell somebody, tell them, don't harm yourself. Don't, don't harm yourself. Don't, don't harm yourself. Based on an assumption, do not harm yourself. There's an apostolic voice that comes out of the prison. Don't harm yourself. He rushed in turned on the lights and fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out. It's authority again. He said, no, don't bring yourself out because you need to wait on me. And there's some things that you need to wait on God for. Don't move because it looked like good timing. Do not move because it looks like good timing because it could be bad timing. Imagine this, as I was reading the text. If he would have, Paul and Silas and Timothy was there too as a part of the company. If they had come out of the prison, the jailer had killed himself. And the officials of that city would have came in and seen a dead jailer. It would have been drama on top of drama and trouble. And they would have had to run for their lives. Instead, this is what happens. He brought them out. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Here we go. God working. What must I, since we submit ourselves to the order of God, now the jailer is asking them, there was a sudden move, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. What did they need to do? Believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who was in his house. So everybody who was in his house got the word of the Lord. Verse 33. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. So they got their wounds washed because they waited on God. And he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. He washed them and he fed them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. I want you to stand to your feet. What God is doing right now is he is delivering the one that we thought was going to be left behind. He's delivering the one that may have gotten you in trouble. He's delivering the people that talked about you. He's delivering people that meant no good for you or to you. He's delivering them. And he said, y'all about to rejoice together. You're about to rejoice with the one that locked the prison door behind you. You're about to eat together. Y'all going to laugh together. Because you understand that there is a greater purpose at work. Don't kill yourself. Don't harm yourself because of assumptions. Touch the person next to you. Tell them no more assumptions. Not assuming anything anymore. I'm waiting on God. And God is going to reveal everything. In his timing. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, I thank you for each and every one of your people. 
that no harm will come to any of them on this day, this year. You're covering your people now. I thank you that they're coming out of every prison. That the prison will not hold them. I thank you right now, oh God, that we will not stop praising you even when we're uncomfortable. Have your way in our lives. Shake our world up. Do not allow us to stay in the place that we've been in. We glorify you. We magnify you for you are Lord and you will come into the prison you will come in by your spirit for it's not by power nor by might but it's by the spirit of the living God have your way the Holy Ghost will come up in the prison the Holy Spirit will come up in your marriage the Holy Spirit will come up in your job in your house the Holy Ghost is at work in the lives of his people we honor you on this day God we praise you on this day God now I want to do this very very quickly if if you have uh, made some assumptions and you've been making assumptions I want you to come up right now if you know there are times where you're saying things and doing things and it's based, you don't even have all the facts. All you, do, all you saw was the prison door open and, and you were assuming, oh, I'm about to lose my job. Assumption. Oh, I'm going down. This is not going to work. Assumption. Oh, my kids are, uh, they're not going to not gonna turn out to be who I want them to be, who God has called them to be. I, I don't know what assumptions that you've been making. But if it's you, you need to come up right now. I want to pray for you. No more assumptions. You're not going to be ruled by assumptions. You keep thinking the worst. You keep thinking the worst about, about everything. All you saw was prison doors open and now you think everything is terrible and everything is bad and nothing is going to work out for me. God said, I got a plan for you. I got something that I am doing in your life. Oh, yes, I am. I am at work in your life. He was at work in the jailer's life. And the jailer would experience the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not going to be bad for you. Do not harm yourself. It is not going to be bad for you. It's about to get real good for you. It's about to get better for you than you ever thought. All you're going to have to do is go in. You're about to go into your prayer closet. You're about to go into deeper levels of study. God is doing a great work in your life. Do not assume the worst about your future and about your life. Angel, things can be difficult right now and they can change suddenly. They can change suddenly. Suddenly, change is coming to your life. I'm telling you right now that it will not remain like this so don't harm yourself right now thinking that things are not going to work for your good do not do it the devil is a liar there's so much that God has in store for you I'm telling you right now there's so much the enemy wanted you to harm yourself. The enemy tried to take you down. But I'm telling you, there's a shaking that's happening. And God has shown up for you. He locked up Paul and Silas so that this man could be saved. It's happening for you now. It's happening for you now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 
God, work. Work, God. Work, God. Work, God, in our lives. We say yes to you. No more, no more assumptions. Things are about to get better. I'm not going to harm myself. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to lean not into my own understanding. I'm going to rely on him. And he will show himself to be mighty in your lives. Jana, you're not going down. You're coming up. You're coming up to another level. That's what all of this is about. It's about you coming up higher because of what God has in store for you. And the more you say yes, Lord, and the more you just wait in the prison, and you say, God, I'm not going nowhere. I'm waiting on you. I'm not going to move before my time. God said, I'm going to meet you in your obedience and your submission. I'm going to meet you right there. Apostles that don't leave the prison. They stay right there because God had a work that he was doing. Now I want to pray. Father, I thank you for your people. Each and every person that's in this house, head bowed eyes closed. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in this place. I bless you. I exalt you. Hallelujah. We give you the glory right now. I thank you, oh God, that no harm will come to them. I thank you right now, God, that they are covered. They are under the blood in the name of Jesus I thank you for covering your people now I honor you oh God for what will come out of this what seemed to be a terrible situation what seemed to be something that could not bless God uses to bless so I thank you right now for what you're doing in the lives of your people this is a season that you have cried. I want you to look at me, but you get ready to celebrate. You get ready to celebrate. You're gonna celebrate the goodness of the Lord in your life. You're gonna say, thank you, God. Thank you for what you did for me. God is working on your behalf even now. Even now. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that our best is still ahead of us, that we will not harm ourselves, but we will trust you with our lives. Somebody give God some glory in this place. Hallelujah. 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 God is working. God is working for you. Do you hear me right now? You've been moved from one place to another. There's some changes that have happened suddenly in your life, but God is working on your behalf. He says, don't move ahead of me. Let me lead you. Let me guide you. There's a deeper walk with God. A deeper walk with God that is beginning in your life. It's a deeper walk. God is taking you to a deeper depth in him. So don't fret what's happening. Don't become fearful. Don't become anxious right now. Do you hear me? Much of what you're experiencing right now is because of the call of God that is on your life. And God has anointed you for purpose. There's a call that you've been running from. You haven't even grabbed a hold fully of what God would have for you. But I declare right now in the name of Jesus that your feet is shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The peace of God be upon you right now. The peace of God be upon you right now. Cover your mind with the helmet of salvation. I declare peace over you no worry no worry I'm telling you right now 
everything that you stand in need of. The Lord told me to tell you that he's already aligned everything for you. He said, you keep, you keep worrying about it. He said, but I got you covered in this season. He said, do not worry because you will walk the floor. And God said, I got you. I got you. I got you. You're my man. God is saying, you are his. He has you in his hand. Somebody give God some... Your path is ordained by God. Even the loss, even the loss God will use. The things that you lost, the people that you lost. I'm telling you right now what I'm knowing by the Spirit and what I see. Everything that you lost God said I'm using what left you to move you forward let me tell you I just got to minister to you real quick you would not have done what God calls you to do unless the exit happened I'm telling you what I know. You believe it? Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for the anointing that's upon his life. Use him for your glory. Use him, God. I pray a double portion upon him right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody give God some praise. All heads bowed, eyes closed for one moment. Listen, if you don't know Jesus, right now is the time to say, God, I want to know you. If you don't know him, I'm talking about an intimate relationship with him. I want you to raise your hand and say, God, I want to know you. I want to know you in a deeper way. I see one hand raised. Come on, there are others that are in this room right now, and God is tugging on your heart, tugging on your spirit. God is working in your life right now. Raise your hand again. Come on, raise it, raise it, raise it, raise it, raise it. Come on, pray this prayer with me. Father, I thank you for Jesus. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you're my Lord. You're my God. You're my Savior. You're my healer. You're my deliverer. You're my righteousness. You're my way maker. Somebody shout hallelujah. Listen, if God called you, there's some people that he's touched. He wants you to join this church. You know he's touched your heart. All I want you to do is raise your hand right now. If you know that God, there's one hand right there. There are others here. God has already touched your heart and told you. Are you is your hand raised? Glory be to God. That is two. Uh, who else is here? And you know that God has been speaking to your heart, telling you. That's three. We're at. Okay, I see three. Okay, three. Glory be to God. Anybody else that God has touched your heart? God saying to you, get yourself planted. Is there another hand? Oh, there's four right there. Okay, five. Oh, wow, security is. Security said, God in here, the Lord is moving. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So listen, I want Pastor Ron and Pastor Michael to talk with you all. They're right up here. 
They're going to help you to get connected because it's important that you get connected to a healthy and well-balanced church. And this is that church. I promise to you that, that God is here and God is moving and he's being glorified in this house. So I want you to see Pastor Michael or Pastor Ron and Pastor Ron probably going to tell you to talk to Pastor Michael. <laughs> because we're all on assignment even after this. Amen. Somebody give God some praise in this place. Were you blessed by the word of the Lord? Let's shout hallelujah. Come on, if you mean it and you know you've been blessed today. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy. I feel the anointing so strong, I just don't even want to leave this place right now. God done caught me up into something. Jesus. Hallelujah. We got a, a whole recap that we get ready to do, but I, I'm, just, I'm just in this place of celebration right now. I don't, I don't know what's getting ready to happen, but I promise to you, it's going to move beyond what we expected. It's going to be more than what we expected. God is on the verge of hitting us with a glory tsunami. Oh, it's going to touch your whole, your whole house is about to be touched by the power of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch our house, touch our children. Overwhelm, 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 overwhelm. Glory, glory. The wind of God, the ruah of God, the presence of God. Hit your house, shake us up. Shake the foundations. Call the jail cell doors to. Open. 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 Every tomb open. In a bad court. Every dead place. Every dead place is getting a word from God. The word is reaching the valley. The tribe bones is getting the word from the... Everything that was dry. God said, I'm about to irrigate your dry land. Everything that you thought was not going to produce fruit in your life. He said, the dew is on the way. The dew is on the way. He said, I'm sending rain to your address. Said, I'm going to answer them. I'm going to answer them. I'm going to answer to you. There are some people that thought that it would not happen for them. And God is saying that this is your time. There are some people in here you've been praying for years concerning one thing. And God is saying to you today, get ready. Your prayers, your supplication has built a memorial in heaven and God is looking at it right now and he says answer the prayers of my daughter answer the prayers of my son oh my God I gotta let this go oh my God 
Hallelujah. 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 I feel it in my spirit. There's an anticipation right now. The sons of God are travailing right now. The earth is about to answer. I'm telling you right now, there are angels that are on the loose right now because of the sons and the daughters of God. This ain't because you did everything right. This is because of God's grace. Get in your house. Oh, we're on the verge of something. We're on the verge of something. We're on the verge of something. It's a glory cloud. It's a glory cloud. Okay, all right, all right. I, I gotta let this go because I'll keep y'all here. We supposed to be doing the recap. You know what? Ain't no recap today. We ain't recapping anything. <laughs> if you missed it, you missed it. Give God some praise. Oh, come on. Come on, praise him for your breakthrough. Praise him for your deliverance. Praise him for your family. Praise him for another opportunity. Praise him for your healing. Praise him for your financial breakthrough. Praise him. 
Glory to God. What's up, TAC family and friends? You just watched an amazing word. Well, I thought it was amazing. Did you think it was amazing? Yeah, I thought it was off the chain. Yeah, because it was. We just want to thank everyone for tuning in each and every Sunday. And we would really appreciate if you like, comment, and subscribe. See you again next week.